Tuesday, the House of Representatives plans to vote on a resolution to stop President Trump's use of a national emergency declaration to fund construction of walls and barriers on the border with Mexico. But what is actually happening on both sides of the border? I spoke with Texas Tribune reporter Julian Aguilar yesterday via Skype from El Paso about that and the status of the much-talked-about caravan. Well, the estimated 1,600 or so folks from Central America arrived in Piedras Negras, Coahuila, which is just across the river from Eagle Pass, Texas. They arrived February 4th, and they were housed in a uh, factory that the city uh, turned into a makeshift shelter. So they had been waiting there. Um, from reports that I saw all month, only between 12 and 15 of those folks were allowed to actually seek asylum in the U.S., and the rest were offered visas by the Mexican government. Some were given visas that lasted a year that were renewable that allows them to travel freely and work there. Other folks were given a 30-day temporary visa to give them more time to get this year-long visa. But, you know, a lot of folks in Texas praise the government of Piedras Negras and Coahuila for, uh, you know, keeping these migrants there, for offering them an alternative instead of, uh, you know, rushing the border or trying to breach um, CBP and uh, seek asylum the way we saw in November um, I think everybody remembers what happened in San Isidro and Tijuana when, you know, dozens of folks uh, tried to, to breach the border fence there or the barrier. Uh, compared to that, there was a lot of order. Now, there were a lot of upset folks that thought they were going to be able to seek asylum, and they were upset with the Mexican government for keeping them there and instead offering them safe haven in Mexico instead of allowing them to come uh, north. But again, it was um, not as chaotic as we saw in November. And Mexican and state officials lauded the government for keeping these folks um, housed there and offering them a, an alternative, even though those folks, that's probably not ideally what they thought they were going to do. Yeah. So now, is this a result of federal policy from Mexico responding to the Trump administration's request to keep people there and wait for asylum uh, outside the United States? Or is this the state taking matters into its own hands? You know, it kind of depends on who you talk to. Obviously, the immigration proposals come from the, from the federal government, the federal side. But some analysts that I wrote, excuse me, that I spoke with and wrote about in the Tribune story, they said the federal government within itself is still trying to exactly figure out how it responds to the Trump administration's demands and what they get in response. You know, what does President Lopez Obrador have to gain from uh, listening to President Trump? Uh, you know, a lot of folks saying you know, there's still ongoing trade negotiations going on. Um, so this was largely an effort by the state of Coahuila and the city of Piedras Negras. Again, the folks that I talked to said that with respect to exact black and white policy, sometimes you know, the left hand doesn't necessarily know what the right hand is doing. So I think we're still trying to figure out exactly what the federal policy is. But in the meantime, a lot of the responsibility is falling on the state governments in Mexico to, to deal with these, this influx of people. And they're, you know, from what I understand, they're going to keep coming. Now, it should be noted that on the flip side, some of these folks were bused to other cities. For example, Ciudad Juarez just across the border here from El Paso. And the mayor was upset. The mayor said, look, his shelters are full. They already have a lot of people there that are waiting to seek asylum and that are, that are waiting to see how far it is. So to add another hundreds of folks from another state um, was just not the way things should be done between, inter, between state governments and local governments here in Mexico. All right. Julian Aguilar of the Texas Tribune. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.